This is a short tutorial on using slicer mode in Bitbox 2. All right, so I've got an empty preset up here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pick a pick a uh, sound to go in this bottom left cell. You do that by pressing the info button. Uh, there's two ways that you can get a sound. You can see there's a load and a record. I have already gone and recorded some samples off of my stage piano, so let's go ahead and load that up. So here we've got some chords uh, with an electric piano. Okay, so if we were to just leave it uh, as it is right now when this comes up, this entire clip is one long sample. The first thing that we need to do to use slicer mode is to press the, the sample type up here, and we can choose slicer. Now, you'll notice that uh, there's, there's no marks indicating that it knows anything about what the areas of this are. So you can press the uh, ellipsis button here, and you can see there's a split, join, scan, and grid. So one of the things that we could start doing is we could move, we could use the touch screen to move and just pick a, a point at which a sample starts. So we could, we could go and do that manually. That's a lot of work, and what's much easier is to use one of these other two buttons, a scan and grid. What grid will do, let's go ahead and hit that, is it'll let, let us pick the number of slices. So we could say, I just want to take this one sample and make 11 slices out of it. Now, depending on what you're slicing, that may or may not be good. You notice that what happened is there's equal, there's 11 equal slices now. It doesn't necessarily line up with the sound. So if you have a, a longer clip, where you don't necessarily have distinct parts in it. Grid can be a fun thing where you just take a long sequence, maybe a vocal sequence, and just randomly slice it up. The mode that I use most often is scan. What scan will do is it will attempt to analyze the wave and find the breaks where there's different sounds, and it'll put the slice marks where it thinks a new sound starts. So you notice that when I did that, it, it did a bunch of crazy stuff. When you hit scan, one of the things it's going to ask you for is a threshold. And this is basically telling you how big of a sound change does the algorithm need to see in order to know that it's a different sound or not. Depending on what you're doing uh, or how clean your sample is, you may want to turn this up or down. So for this particular sample, I'm going, to, I'm going to turn it way up because I recorded this and I have very clean sections between uh, each of these sound clips. It takes a second. All right, so now you can see that uh, we're looking pretty good. However, you can see that it made a mistake here, which is it's, it's counting this as two different ones. So this is where this last button join comes in. If you put the white bar right over top and you hit join, it basically joins those two segments. So now that we have our sample all sliced up, let's go ahead and start triggering it. So I've already got a, a trigger uh, sequencer wired up, but you notice that it's only playing the first slice, which is almost always what you don't want if you're using slices. What we want to add to this is we want to be able to control the slice, like which point in the file it's playing from an external source. So in order to do that, if you press info, Pressing info multiple times will let you scroll through all of the menu options for this slice. We want to go to the second one, so press info twice. And you can see that there is a, uh, there's a menu option here for slice. So we could, we could manually change that if we wanted. And maybe that's cool. Um, depending on what you're doing, just rolling this knob back and forth might be a fun option. Uh, one of the things that I think is more interesting is being able to control this slice using a control voltage. So you could run a, an envelope or an LFO or a random sample and hold type module through it. In order to do that, you see there's, there's three rectangles down here. We'll tap on the one on the left. What this allows us to do is to pick a modulation source for this value. You can see there's, there's a bunch of things here. We could use the MIDI velocity. We could bring in an external control voltage. We could use the MIDI volume, the mod wheel. For this demo, I'm going to use EXT1. 
So ext is short for external. ext one two three four are are this column of input ports right here. The other thing you have to set is the amount, how much of the incoming control voltage picks the position. So generally, you're just going to set it. The, you're going to want to set that for 100 percent. All of that control voltage will control the slice position. Once we pick that, you can see it appears down here, showing that the external one port is going to be modulating slice. So if we go back to uh, this here, uh, let me add a control voltage in to change that. All right, so that's the that's the, the general gist of it. Uh, the rest is up to your creativity, but that's creating a slice and controlling the slice position from a control voltage. Happy modulating.